My mom is here. She's a pure vegetarian. There are a lot of people again who say, why is that there are no vegetarian items? You know, it's the same gyros and koli vada and all that. So on demand, we are going to make some hoodies. So we have three different kind of kodis that we serve. One is of ji uh, puja, one is kulla, uh, and uh, one is uh, banana. The matte gul. This is a favorite uh, snack of uh, every company. Yeah, this just melt. This uh, yellow. This is kulla bachi. Bengan ka bharta, bengan ka bharta, but the South Kendra version. Unicorn special prawns is one dish that you know people have been uh. wanting to have. They used to make something called crab chili, and then we're going to have unicorn special kane masala. Uh. And Hi folks, hope you're doing well. I've just stepped out for a spot of lunch here in Nama Bengaluru and I thought I'd share this experience with you. So when I first moved to Bengaluru many years ago, one of the things that I found most interesting was the fact that there seemed to be an abundance of fresh seafood. And I thought that was quite interesting because Bengaluru as you know is landlocked and has no coastline whatsoever. But then I discovered that out here we benefit from procuring fresh seafood from both coasts which aren't too far away whether it's the western coast or on the eastern side and so with the abundance of good seafood there also emerged some very good seafood restaurants across levels but over a period of time some of these eateries have also sadly closed and one such eatery was a place called Unicorn on Infantry Road here in Bengaluru and I remember that we used to go there once in a while and uh, they had a few dishes that were rather special, especially something called the Unicorn Special Prawns. And so when the restaurant closed, obviously you, you missed tasting that. But today we are on our way to revive some of those memories. So I have discovered this eatery, not discovered actually, I visited this eatery earlier. It's called the Lighthouse Restaurant in RMV Second Stage. We've done a couple of episodes on the Lighthouse Restaurant and the people behind Lighthouse are connected to the people at Unicorn. So today we're on our way to the Lighthouse, but to savor some of those specialty dishes of Unicorn. So we're going to get to the restaurant and you'll find out more. And I'm not going to be doing this by myself. I also have a couple of friends joining in. So you'll meet them at the table. So stick around, especially if you like your seafood. This should be an interesting one. Well, I've arrived at the lighthouse and I'm sitting with... Namaste. Pratiksha Nayak, dynamic lady entrepreneur and also co-owner of the lighthouse. So we've done a couple of videos here. If you haven't caught them yet, you must definitely look it up. We've done an in-depth review here and then also a subsequent visit, I think, uh, when things were not so great. Yes. And how are things now? Yeah, it is fantastic and it's. Uh, I'm very thankful to you again and I can keep saying that again and again. And in a week, at least, we have four of Kripa Lamana's fans who are coming here. And uh, uh, I think last week it, it was full of these NRI people who come down uh, from their places. And then, like, we watched you on Kripal's show, and we've come all the way from the US, from Singapore. Uh, and Restaurateurs may say that, but I think it's always the people who make things happen. We always illuminate it to a certain extent, but beyond that, people perhaps come watching that video, but the fact that they return is entirely thanks to the effort of you and your team out here. Thank you so much for that. I don't know how to really appreciate or take this compliment, but from the Lighthouse team, we know it's all because of Kripa Lamana. And I still remember the after the first episode was shot here, the first week it was full like all the Amchigeles over here, all the Konkani people were here and it was so nice when they came up and they spoke to me saying that We've come mainly because it is Amchi Gale and we've come to support a woman entrepreneur. So what is Amchi Gale? Company speaking uh, uh, clad is called the Amchi Gale. Amchi, Amchi Gale. Gale. So we've come to support the Amchi Gale. Amchi Gale. Again and today we're going to be doing not the food that we've tasted earlier. If you want to know what the lighthouse, the signature dishes are about, you must take a look at the last two vlogs and it is my intent that we will not taste the dishes that we had tasted the last time. I've come in a bit earlier before my guests arrive just so that I get a sense of what we're going to be tasting. So today we're going to be tasting largely dishes from the Unicorn 
and I think they closed what about so three years. Three years. Ago. Three years ago. It seems like they've closed years ago. I am the wife of the proud owner of Unicorn Bar and Restaurant, as well as the daughter-in-law of Mr. G R Desai, who started this, say about uh, 28 years ago, 28 years back. Yes, and. Uh, when Lighthouse started and uh, when they got to know I belong to the Desai's family, there was a lot of pressure on me because they were always connecting me to, you know, Unicorn and they wanted the food uh, that was served at Unicorn and since the Unicorn restaurant was shut, uh, I thought, okay, let me do something and it took me about three years to, you know, get all the recipes out. Of course, uh, you know, uh, it, it was a big challenge for me to get a lot of things uh, in place. But I'm glad I'm able to at least give the most famous uh, recipes. So that's the unicorn special prawns. Exactly. Uh -huh. Unicorn special prawns is one dish that, you know, people have been uh -huh. wanting to have. And from the time a few of them have got to know that we've introduced uh -huh. that this year, a lot of people have been coming to have it. We're also going to be tasting something else today. Yes. There's, uh, they used to make something called crab chili. And then we're going to have unicorn special carne masala. Uh -huh. And we are introducing the North Canberra uh, delicacy. It's called Tepla Ambat. This is more towards the North Canberra, uh, you know, people who enjoy the teppal dish, Bangra teppal Ambat. My mom is here. She's a pure vegetarian. There are a lot of people again who say, why is that there are no vegetarian items? You know, it's the same ghee rose and koli vada and all that. So on demand, we are going to make some hodis, pulla hodi. So your mom's in the kitchen? Yes, mom's in the kitchen, depending on her for a lot of vegetarian konkani, I mean, amchigale items. Yeah, yes. also I think we'll head to the kitchen and see what's happening. What's your mom's name? Parvati Nayak. See what uh, Mrs. Parvati Nayak is cooking. <laughs> Hello. Hello. <laughs> How are you doing? Baba, it's shy. What is this? Sweet banana. Rava chili uh, powder and then salt. Hello, Frank. Most of the vegetarian amchigeli dishes. Okay. Uh, mommy is more than happy to come here oh. and you know, uh, teach the staff and train them. So we have three different kind of podies that we serve. One is of uh, G Puja, one is uh, Pula and uh, one is uh, banana. So we are going to have the shallow fry as well as the deep fry. Uh, for deep fry, this is the masala. We use uh, chana powder. There is a menu that's already sorted. Do you remember Unicorn, the restaurant on Infantry Road? That is Pratiksha's in-laws. So we're going to be doing some of the dishes from there. And then her mother is also cooking some vegetarian... Uh, oh and do you like teppal lambat? Nice. Yes. We're doing a teppal lambat. Yes, teppal is a amchigela equivalent of Chinese pepper corn. Yes, yes, yes. She has one pepper corn. We use teppal in a lot of vegetarian dishes in South Canada. So, well, you've already probably seen my friend Dr. Anand Shunoy in an earlier vlog. He's an eminent cardiologist and he also has a passion for cars. for cars. We're not going to talk about that, but today he is my lunch companion and we also have another doctor joining us. Yes, Dr. Sunil Kini. Hopefully he'll be joining us. Ah. So of course we are running a little late with doctors. They get into surgeries, they get into procedures and I guess that lunch can wait, everything else can wait, but the patient cannot wait. Yes, true. Huh? He's still operating, I think. And kokum. Yeah. Lot of kokum. Yeah, lot of kokum. So in this there's also some green chili. Yeah. It has anti-carcinogenic properties. Yeah. Lot of antioxidants. Flavonoids. Very important. Yeah, it's in digestion, but it has a lot of uh, properties. I, I think I should hang out with Dr. Shinoi more often. Garcinia, they, they market in capsules for the weight loss remedy. Yeah. So is it good for the heart also? Anything good. Anything good for the body is good for the heart. Full 
ಗುಲಾಬ್ ಬಜ್ಜು ಈ ಗುಲಾಬ್ ಬಜ್ಜಿ ಬ್ರೆಡ್ ಫುಡ್ಕೀಚೆ ವೆರಿ ಗುಡ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ದಟ್ ಕ್ರಂಚಿ ಗ್ರೀನಿನೆಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದಟ್ ರವಾ ಅಂಡ್ ಇಸ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಸ್ಪೈಸಿಂಗ್ ಇಸ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ರೈಟ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಡೀಪ್ ಫ್ರೈಡ್ ಸೊ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಶ್ಯಾಲೋ ಫ್ರೈಡ್ ಸೊ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಕ್ರಮ್ಡ್ ಇನ್ ದಟ್ ಸೆಮೋಲಿನಾ ಸ್ಪೈಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಸಾಲ್ಟ್ ಬ್ಯಾಟರ್ ಡಿಲಿಷಿಯಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ಬೆಸ್ಟ್ ಆಕ್ಚುಲಿ ದ ಮಟ್ಟಿ ಗೋಲ್ಡ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ಫೇವ್ರೇಟ್ ಸ್ನಾಕ್ ಆಫ್ ಎವ್ರಿ ಕಂಪನಿ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಅಗೇನ್ ಜೂ ಗುಟ್ಟೆ ವೆರಿ ಗುಡ್ ವೆರಿ ನೈಸ್ ಎಸ್ಪೆಷಲಿ ದಿಸ್ ಕ್ರಮ್ ಫ್ರೈಡ್ ಒನ್ ಐ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಟೇಸ್ಟ್ ಸಮ್ ಓಮಾ ಸಮ್ ಅಜ್ವೈನ್ ಇನ್ ದಟ್ ಬ್ಯಾಟರ್ ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ವಿ ಕೋನೋ ಟೇಸ್ಟ್ ದಟ್ ಗುಲ್ಡಾ ಪೋಡಿ ದಿ ಬ್ರಿಂಜಾಲ್ ಪೋಡಿ ದಿಸ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಮೆಲ್ಟ್ ಹಾಂ ಇಟ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಐ ಥಾಟ್ ಐ ವುಡ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟು ಬೈಟ್ ಇನ್ ಟು ದಿಸ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ started off in goa once the portuguese took over goa so they started migrating so they came south all the west coast oh so whether it's mangrove kalwa you know then kerala so originally they were all in goa, goa. Oh, okay. so that's our ancestral temples are still in goa i'm learning so much about the gsb culture yeah. thanks to dr shinoy pratiksha and also pratiksha's mother and this nendra nendra podi So the Nandre Baal Podi is also delicious. Very lightly spiced and then you've got the texture of the semolina and then that... Witness is from the banana. Mm. And what happens is when you heat banana, it sugars concentrate. Also banana, ripe banana has a hint of tartness. The hint of sourness, the slight edge that also concentrates. Absolutely. Also some of the banana is charred a bit. So you also have some of the smokiness that comes from that... charring of the banana so the flavors you got a light whale of the spice you tasting the crunch the grainy crunch of that semolina a bit of the warmth of the chili powder that goes into it but what really comes through is the sweetness of the ripe banana the ripe mushy sweetness of the banana laced with that tingle of sourness so this is another speciality what oh, is the drum stick yeah, drum stick taste it on a polo in sri ram bhavan hotel ayodhya mangalore also i tasted the patrode so they said the patrode masala is what yes. goes into baking yes. so one day so houses will make patrode next day sanna polo ha with the with the batter with, with the, the batter ah that's what i learned and so that's the interesting thing about food right rice uh, rava you had rice rava sanna kotta sanna kotta in batter you put rice yeah. and they make patta that is, is like just steam yeah. just like the idli like idli but small in size yes the jackfruit fruit leaves which jackfruit leaves drumstick podi podi last time i tasted a drumstick uh, koli vada it's completely different drumstick podi then you can bite into it like mm. that. how you do the sugar cake so the flavor is awesome what you tasting really is a vegetal character of the drumstick in the drumstick kernels I think it's a acquired taste many people may not like it very earthy flavor very earthy flavor what's nice here is that when you first bite into it you tasting the batter yes. the spiciness that comes through the batter crunchy the crunchiness that comes through it i think there's a probably also a little bit of corn starch that goes into yes. it to give it yes. that yes. crispiness and then once you are done once you go past that you get into the vegetal notes the earthy vegetal character of that drumstick yes. a drumstick lollipop the gsb style the gsb ha uh, drumstick lollipop podi mm 
need to savor the flavor. Mm. Be patient. Mm. Eat it slowly. You can't do this in a hurry. And that's when it rewards you. To the viewer, it may look perhaps slightly unappealing, but to the one who's doing the eating, well, it's a different story altogether. No? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> I like the way doctor is diligently <laughs> stripping that drumstick of all the kernels. It's good for digestion, acidity. Mm. Good properties. And moringa anyway has medicinal properties, yes. right? Mm. Mm. Medicinal and antiviral properties. And antiviral properties. Moringa is very well known. So I think in the current situation we should have a lot of moringa. Nah. No? Uh -huh. yeah. A lot. Antiviral properties against dengue and other. You have this ancient wisdom. Yes. Right? In a lot of the diet, in a lot of the food that we do, right? Yes. yes. Uh -huh. Because see a lot of traditional food items is used in Indian cuisine. Let's say turmeric. Mm. Turmeric has a lot of uh, properties against aging, Alzheimer's, cancer, cancer curcumin, right? Curcumin. Ah. Yes, it is there from ages. Same thing with coconut oil. Raw coconut oil has a lot of important properties because it's a mixture of medium and short chain fibers. So it directly gets absorbed in the small intestine. Ah, okay. And it has an important uh, remedy for Alzheimer's. Uh, halting the progression of Alzheimer's, a degenerative brain disease. So in the West, there is well accepted that coconut oil, extra virgin coconut oil, is the treatment for Alzheimer's. And in Konkani cuisine, we use it. That's not to use it for cooking or anything. Like you know, in Shevai, the noodles which you make. Like a garnish on top. Garnish on top. We use that over dosa, over patta. So not only does it have the flavor, but it also has all these uh, medicinal. Properties, fantastic. This is Gulla Bajji. Gulla Bajji. Eggplant. Uh, like he said, it's Bengan ka Bharta. Bengan ka Bharta, but the South Kendra version. <laughs> Green chilli salt, ing. Green chilli salt, ing. Ah, then uh, imli. Tamarind, okay. Tamarind juice. We put this in the tandoori first, tandoori butti first, so that it's roasted properly. Will you smoke the brindle? Yes, yes, yes. But not everybody smokes, but maybe that smoking has come from the north. <laughs> I guess she has a benefit of a tandoor in the but kitchen here, yes, so she's yes. decided to smoke it. <laughs> tandoor. So you can either eat it with chapati huh. or dosa or rice. Fresh coconut oil, you can taste it. And again, raw here. Mm. Yes, remember, it's not cooked, it's not boiled or anything. Eggplant is smoked. Eggplant is smoked. But it's otherwise it is not mm. so the oil, oil is not cooked. So is it served uh, room temperature almost? Room temperature or sometimes cold. So I can definitely taste the flavor of the coconut oil and also all the saswe, the mustard, mustard assay and uh, seasoning curry leaf. Curry leaf. Mm. Maybe because tartness is there, maybe mm. lime juice color. Tamarind. 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 Mm, there's a bit of tamarind pulp that goes into it. So this is a, I think a mild, very healthy version of the pengan ka bharta. Yes. Uh, this is a GSB, uh, the coconut oil laden version. Mm. I can imagine if you mix it with a little bit of rice, maybe a little hot rice. Hot rice will be very tasty, you know. Kripal, just remember, coconut oil is the Indian equivalent of olive oil. Correct. Just remember. Extra virgin olive oil. It's the same actually. Problem is, when you start deep frying things in coconut oil repeatedly, when coconut oil is used in a virgin form, the best oil ever. Yeah. Even better than olive oil. So for all of you who splash a bit of extra virgin olive oil on your salads, perhaps time to think about cold pressed coconut oil and the virtues of it as explained by Dr. Shenoy. As for me, well, I want to savor a bit more of this Gulla Bhaji. What do you say? I said it tastes fantastic, awesome. In Konkani you said, what is in Konkani, what do you think? Bari like Jala. Bari like Jala. That's the sort of uh, Gulla Bhaji this is. Is this part of the menu? It's not, but on demand, I think we can definitely... I'm going to place Pratiksha's numbers in the video below. So if you want to taste this uh, Gulla Bhaji, I think call them, give them some notice. Mm, so that they can prepare it for you. I think what stays is the flavor of the coconut oil. The coconut oil meets you the moment you place it and even after you're done with that Gulla Bhaji, it's the flavor of the coconut oil that lingers.
Tata special prawns, Urf unicorn special prawn. This is a chicken 65, okay. South Indian chicken 65. Fish 93. We use uh, kingfish in this. Uh, that was introduced in the year 1993. So, <laughs> so you know, it seems uh, you know my father-in-law and the cooks they decided you know they keep the name fish 93. Yeah, 93. Yeah. I think what they also do is they probably fry the prawns yes. before they toss yes. it, right? Yes, yes. like a swimmer. Like a swimmer, not like what you think I've tasted. Yeah. It's not a typical so prawn fry. Yeah. So tell me, there's also a very strong sort of a marine flavor. Why is that? Uh. <laughs> there's some secret. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a secret. She will tell me that off camera. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to tell you that off camera. <laughs> mm. I think they may be using some that shells of the prawns and no, 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 definitely some. not. There's also a bit of sourness. Yeah. Is there also some ketchup that goes into this? Yes. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, so I think we're not going to spend too much time trying to decipher all that because after all, with great difficulty, she has managed to pry the copyrighted recipe from her uh, husband's family. <laughs> and now it's of course the lighthouse yes. special prawns. We're going to just savor it. But I like the warmth. I like a bit of the heat. There's a lot of the intensity of the prawn flavors that you're tasting in that. I don't know if it makes sense. There's also a bit of slight tartness laced with a bit of sweetness that perhaps comes from some ketchup too that goes into it along with a bunch of other ingredients. Mm. Mm. But the prawns are nice and plump. Mm. Quite juicy. Do you it like tastes, it? It tastes different. Mm. Nothing like what I've tasted before. This is the fish uh, 93. Fish 93. Fish 93. A lot of curry leaf there. So this is basically the sea fish. Yes. A lot of flavor the coconut oil. Hmm? But it's a fish dish that's very spicy. Yeah. Spicy. I can taste actually a bit of the rawness of the red chili powder. Huh? And also the salt. Yes. It's a bit spicy for me. Yeah, this is a bit spicy. From what I remember, Unicorn was a permit room. So I think when you have a few beers, when you have a few whiskeys, then you need that added punch. And I think this chili hit that you get, the salt hit, I think this is what it would definitely... So when you have this, I think you need something rather cooling for normal palates. This is a spicy one. Yes, uh, Doctor spice, is feeling spice, the heat. I am feeling the <laughs> And as a chicken 65. We need a palate cleanser. <laughs> Actually, onions are the best palate cleanser. Yes, I agree. Okay. We have a lot of uh, Andrides who come here. Who like the spice? Yeah. So they find most of our food mainly because it, ha it has got a lot of coconut in that. They find it not very spicy. I think for normal palates, you will find it rather spicy. In this chicken 65, I can taste some of the garam masala, some of the coriander, along with the curry leaf, of course. chili so this is one with the shell ah. we even make the shell crab on okay. request this is the authentic uh, crab uh, mangurian curry doctor is already on the crab ah, it's too how is that it's fantastic yeah. i think when it comes to the crab it's has to be both the hands, you know. The carne fry masala is like um, like prawn gyros. Oh, delicious! The crab is rather fresh and flaky, you know. I love sweetness of crab, and these are usually those sea crabs, which are quite yes. so. The flesh, unlike a yes. mud crab, the flesh won't be flaky. The flesh will be slightly mushy. Yes. There's also a cat here. I don't know if you can hear him in the background, but he snuck into this terrace somewhere. I guess he smelled all that fish. But this is a sort of crab. Mm. But you need to chew all its goodness out. This is the time when we eat. Ah. Or when we sit for lunch and... Uh, oh, so that's when the cat comes. Yeah. Of course, we are rather late. 
because when you're eating with doctors, I've realized you can only lunch when the doctors can lunch, right? And they have pressing matters which are far more important than eating crab. Huh? You know what happens when you're eating crab, right? In an ideal situation, you don't want any other distractions. When you have too much food, then you don't spend as much time on that crab. Because when it comes to the crab, you got to literally pay attention to every bit of that crab. Once you're done with that fat, plump belly, once you've scooped the flesh out, once you've sucked into all the goodness, all that saline, slightly sweetish goodness, then you want to get to the legs. You want to chew them one by one. With all due respects to Pratiksha's vegetarian mom, <laughs> who's sitting right here and wondering what I'm going about. Just because uh, we food. love uh, chicken, we used to love yeah. chicken, and she learned that and she used to make amazingly the chicken. There's also an appam that is sitting here that I have conveniently forgotten about. I've been distracted by the crab. This curry is very good. Huh? The crab mangalorean curry is, tastes better than the chili crab. I love this uh, this gashi, so good. Mm. There's a bit of sweetness in that curry, no? Is that in, from the coconut milk? Yeah, it's coconut. So good. I think next let's turn our attention to that kane. There's a bit of a spicy note that I'm tasting in that fish. Also the tamarind. Next that. Chili crab. You know, unlike the fish, which is very spicy. Yes. Even here, there's spice, but because you have the sweetness in that crab meat, crab. that tends yes. to cut it. Yes. Mm. You know, so what's interesting is the way in which it is cooked, right? So I think this is more like a stir fry of sorts. Yes. Yes. Whereas here, the crab sits in that curry. So as it sits in the curry, curry even the texture of the crab changes. So you'll find the crab is very soft. Whereas here there's a bit of the flakiness still intact. The crab meat is still a little firm. Whereas here it's absorbed all the flavor of the masala. And because it's absorbed the flavor of the masala, you're not tasting its sweetness as much as opposed to that green chili crab. So that's the interesting thing. You have the same crab. It's met two different preparation styles, but it has adapted itself. Here the crab has given into the spice, the warmth of the masala. Whereas there, because it's a singular sort of a spicy yeah. note of that green chili, the sweetness of the crab asserts itself. Correct. Fantastic. You know, that's a beautiful thing about food. And people ask me as to, you know, you're tasting food all the while, don't you get bored? <laughs> this is why I don't get bored. Because if you listen to that food, if you listen to that crab, be it that red masala crab or that green masala crab, they'll have a story to tell. That is teplambar, bangbe teplambar. So this is with the tepal. Tepal, yeah. I can distinctly taste the tepper. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Very nice. Tepper is very unique because it tastes like no other spice. Mm. The rice in this is a little starchy yeah. and that's what you're tasting really. And I agree, it's it's a bit of an acquired taste. When did you make this fish curry? Probably in the morning. Morning. Yeah. I would imagine that this would taste better in the night. night yeah. Right? No, we actually made it yesterday. Ah. Uh, the Bangda, the Bangda wasn't that uh, what do you call fleshy? I think mackerel, like tuna, is a fish that has a lot of oils, and therefore it's quite overwhelming in its flavors. And that's the reason why, if you're not, if you're a fence-sitting sort of a fish eater, mackerel is not really a fish that you will enjoy much. But then, when you do preparations like the tepal, at least when I was in Karwar at Shweta lunch home, what they told me is, stronger fish is where tepal comes in handy. So it was quite a revelation to learn from you that. In your in-laws place, they use tepal in vegetable preparations because I would hardly associate vegetables to be strong in flavors, right? True. Yeah, but they use their tepal not for the, you know, toning down the, uh, this thing of the food, but it's more of like a digestive properties. Ah. And, uh, vegetarian dishes, they use tepal where you will associate the food items with gas like beans oh. or okay. with the jackfruit. Jackfruit seeds curry we make. In that, they always put tepal. The mackerel certainly is quite plump and fleshy in its character. 
So all the flavors, all the pepper, you're not really biting into the pod or the kernel here, but all those flavors, all those essential oils have seeped into the curry and into the fish, and that's really what you're tasting. So if you are not used to it, perhaps you will taste something different, but if you're accustomed to slightly sharp flavors and flavor tones in your food, well, it certainly makes for a pleasing fish curry. Well, that was a great lunch. Unfortunately, we couldn't do the close in the eatery because Dr. Shenoy got some urgent calls and he had to rush just as we were getting ready to do the close. So I said, okay, fine, let's do the close to the video in the car. But I hope you enjoyed this lunch vlog. It was nice to be back at the lighthouse after a while and also taste some very interesting dishes. Dishes that the owner's mother was preparing, especially those vegetarian podies, I think with a sort that hit the spot. In fact, Dr. Shinoy mentioned that the drumstick podi that we tasted were the sort that his mom used to make and he hadn't tasted them in decades. And I think that's a beautiful thing about food. Its ability to connect us back to those very special memories from times and days long gone by. That time may never return, but at least those memories of those times, those wonderful times gets rekindled when we taste something from that era. We enjoyed the meal overall. The star dishes for us were definitely the podies, the unicorn special prawns that they call the a lighthouse special prawn too was rather interesting. Uh, some of the dishes were spicy. For instance, the fish 93 is a sort that you need to really have a very strong stomach for chili, for red chilies to be able to handle that. When it came to the main course, I think that crab curry was superb. I loved the flavor of the crab curry. Even the crab chili was rather interesting too. It, its sweetness contrasted nicely with the green chili spice notes. And also that teppal ambat. The, with the mackerel. It was a plump mackerel that had all the body to soak up the flavors of the tepal that had seeped into that gravy. We also tasted a very interesting uh, vegetable preparation uh, with the eggplant, the gulla. The GSB version of the Bengan Bartha, as Pratiksha put it. I think that was an interesting find. Also nice to have that conversation with doctor and understand some of the nuances on food and how it correlates to the culture and uh, the various influences growing up. And I think that's a wonderful thing when you are uh, at a table with people. And I think I should do more of these conversations. I think I should do more of these meals where I invite some of my uh, friends to participate. I think food is also about culture. And especially when you have people from the culture, from the same culture as the food, or the same background as the food, or people who come from the same region as the food comes from, you always learn something new. And uh, so it was a nice lunch and happy to see that the lighthouse is also showcasing some of these very traditional dishes. I think some of the dishes are already on the menu, perhaps some may not be. Uh, but I'm going to place the number to the lighthouse in the video description. So in case you want to check on some of the dishes, you may want to give them a call. So all in all, a great afternoon. I hope you enjoyed this watch too. If you did, give this vlog, give this video a big thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, I would recommend that you subscribe. We'll have more such food videos, more such fun tastings coming up. Until the next time, take care, stay safe. Bye.